Sailors spoke of a sea monster, a kraken that could wrap tentacles around a ship and sink it. We later discovered that this sea monster was real and nothing more than the supersized giant squid. The kraken myths were exaggerated, but do you know what is not exaggerated? The size and ferocity of prehistoric squids. Unlike the dinosaurs, prehistoric squids are not talked about much often. So, get ready for a treat because these creatures were not just terrifying, they were also fascinating. Let me take you back to the late Cretaceous period, approximately 85 to 70 million years ago, when the mighty Tusatuthis Longa roamed the ancient seas. This colossal cephalopod inhabited the western interior seaway a vast expanse of water that once covered what is now North America. Based on fossil records, we know they were very similar to modern-day giant squids, both in size and anatomy. Imagine a creature of the deep, stretching an impressive 25 to 35 feet from the tip of its mantle to the ends of its tentacles and weighs 2,000 pounds on average. The Tusatuthis longa may be soft and squishy on the outside, but this was a fierce predator, preying on other cephalopods, fish, and possibly even small marine reptiles. Beneath all that soft tissue, the Tusatuthis hides a secret weapon, its beak. This prehistoric squid's beak is a biological masterpiece that combines both hardness and flexibility. Engineers and scientists have been captivated by its design as it provides inspiration for creating new materials. The squid beak is primarily composed of chitin, a tough carbohydrate found in the outer skeletons of insects, shrimp, and crabs. However, it's not just chitin alone. The beak also contains some bonding protein. What makes it special is how different parts of the beak exhibit varying degrees of hardness. The edge of the beak, which interacts with the squid's delicate mouth tissues, is relatively soft. In contrast, the tip of the beak, where bone crushing occurs, is about 100 times harder. At the tip, where the bone crushing action occurs, the beak is incredibly strong. It can snap a fish's spine with just one bite. The Tusatuthis must have used this formidable beak to immobilize prey and prevent them from swimming away. From fossil records, many experts believe that this prehistoric squid fed on mosasaurs. Now, that is very impressive because mosasaurs were themselves formidable predators. Many prehistoric museums depict the epic battles that must have occurred between the Tusatuthis and mosasaurs. We can only imagine how intense such battles were as both predators were efficient killers. The mosasaurs could grow up to 50 feet in length and weigh about 10 tons. This makes them much bigger and heavier than any squid that ever existed. Um, but not all mosasaurs get this big. Most are just the size of porpoises. But make no mistake, that is still a large creature. To tackle a creature this big, the Tusatuthis had another secret weapon, its tentacles. These pairs of appendages can reach 12 feet or more in length and are covered with powerful suckers at the tip. These are not your everyday cephalopod suckers like those you find on an octopus. When you look at the suckers of an octopus, they are smooth and soft all through. They are held onto objects only through suction power. Those of the Tusatuthis are much more advanced and dangerous. This squid has a unique arrangement of extremely sharp teeth on their limbs and tentacles known as ring teeth. Unlike octopuses, which have only eight arms, squids boast eight arms and two tentacles. The arms and tentacles are adorned with hundreds to thousands of suction cups or suckers. These structures serve various purposes during hunting and capturing prey. They also possess rotating hooks, or a combination of hooks and suction cups. With this setup, the Tusatuthis could latch onto the mosasaurs very tightly. There was absolutely no way the mosasaurs could escape the grip of the squid. While holding onto this ancient reptile, the squid does severe damage to its body using its hooks and ring teeth. This makes it difficult for the mosasaurs to focus on its attack. It would have to switch to a defensive strategy as it tries to get free from these tentacles of anguish. Now it is a battle between the snapping jaws of the mosasaurs and the razor-sharp beak of the Tusatuthis. The mosasaur's mouth is lined with conical teeth very similar to that of crocodiles, and it would snap aggressively as it tries to escape the tangle of death it finds itself in. Slowly but surely, the Tusatuthis begins to draw its prey closer to its beak. Once the prey is positioned within reach of the beak, it is game over. The beak, which is shaped like that of a parrot, is capable of delivering bites with a thousand pounds of force. They would snap through steel cable, the way you would bite through a stick of celery. Their temperament can quickly switch from being gentle to aggressive in less than a second. These gentle giants are fast aggressive, and always hungry. One moment they look like easy prey, and the next they are one preying on the hunter. Unfortunately, these formidable hunters are not invincible. 
They sometimes lose the battle to other predators, especially those that are a lot bigger. Fossils suggest that it fell prey to the many predatory fish of the western interior seaway, such as the Simolichthys nepaholica. One such fish met its end while attempting to swallow a Tusatuthys, suffocating as the cephalopod's head and tentacles blocked its gills during the struggle. The regions where this ancient squid thrived included areas that are today known as Kansas, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, Colorado, and Manitoba. The only confirmed fossil of the Tusatuthys was found in Kansas, but but its presence in other regions is strongly suggested by various findings. The Tusatuthis was not the only prehistoric giant squid. The Yezo region provided us a couple more, such as the Yezotuthis giganteus, the Haberatuthis poseidon, and the Nanaimatuthis hikidai, which closely resembles modern-day vampire squids. The Haboratuthis poseidon was a true leviathan of the Cretaceous period. Its fossilized beak, a remnant of its once mighty presence, suggests it was a colossus among cephalopods, comparable to the largest of today's oceanic dwellers. This squid roamed the marine environment of the Cretaceous about 80 million years ago. Back then, the Earth was divided into two supercontinents, Laurasia and Gondwana, with a vast equatorial sea known as the Tethys Sea separating them. The climate was warmer and the sea levels were higher, creating numerous shallow inland seas. These waters were teeming with life, including now extinct marine reptiles, ammonites, and a diverse array of cephalopods. In this vibrant underwater realm, where the sunlight filtered through the warm, clear waters, the Haberatothes Poseidon thrived. Its habitat around what is now Hokkaido, Japan, would have been a bustling marine ecosystem, supported by the rich diversity of the Cretaceous period. The seafloor was dotted with reefs and teeming with prehistoric fish, while above, the surface waters were patrolled by predatory mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. The Haboratuthis Poseidon itself was an impressive sight. With a crest length of about 2.4 inches, it was larger than the giant squids of our time, which have a crest length of about 1.8 inches for a 25-foot-long individual. This suggests that the Haboratuthis could have been as large, if not larger, than some of the biggest squids we know today. Its mantle, the main body behind the head, could have been several feet in length, with tentacles extending even further, making it a formidable predator of its time. In about the same period and region as the Habratuthis, another giant lurked in the waters, and this was the Yezotuthis giganteus. This colossal squid was a true titan of its time. With a length surpassing 16 feet, it would have been a sight to behold, dwarfing many of the marine creatures that shared its habitat. The Yezotuthis giganteus thrived in the deep, mysterious waters of the Osao Sunai Formation, part of the Yezo group in what is now known as Hokkaido, Japan. This region was a marine environment characterized by its cold, nutrient-rich waters that supported a diverse ecosystem. The seabed would have been littered with the remnants of prehistoric battles, the shells of ammonites, and the bones of marine reptiles that once soared through the water column. The only evidence to the existence of this magnificent creature is a solitary upper jaw, a relic that hints at its formidable size and predatory nature. The jaw's structure suggests a kinship with a modern-day giant squid, hinting at a lineage that has survived millions of years. The name Yezotuthis giganteus, which means the gigantic squid of Ezo, is a homage to the region's historical name, Izo, encapsulating the grandeur and mystery of this prehistoric behemoth, not only dominated the food chain, but also left an indelible mark on the paleontological record, allowing us to marvel at what once was the sovereign of the ancient seas. Paleontologists agree that squids are one of the most difficult animals to document. The reason is, they do not fossilize very well because their pH level is too high to cause their carcass to form the mineral deposit needed to form a fossil. Fortunately, this squid had a very odd feature. They had what we would liken to a spine, even though they are invertebrates. Seems confusing, but this spine is not a true spine. Instead, it is an evolved shell that became absorbed into the body of the squid. Squids belong to the mollusk family, same as your garden slugs and snails. They're not supposed to have spines. The ancestors of modern squids were part of a diverse and ancient group of marine creatures known as cephalopods. These early cephalopods first appeared in the late Cambrian period, around 500 million years ago, and they were characterized by their distinctive shells. The early cephalopods had external shells with buoyancy chambers, which helped them navigate the primordial seas. 
One of the most well-known shelled ancestors of squids is the ammonites, which thrived from about 400 to 65 million years ago. These creatures had coiled, chambered shells and were quite prolific in the Mesozoic seas. As cephalopods evolved, many groups began to lose their external shells, leading to the more streamlined body plan we see in modern squids. But the shell did not disappear totally, they only evolved to be on the inside of the squid's squishy body. This internal shell, known as the pen or gladius in squids, is a remnant of these ancestral shells, providing support without the bulkiness of an external shell. Thanks to the gladius and beaks of these ancient squids, we have a record of their existence, and we are able to model what these amazing creatures looked like millions of years ago. Watch out for our next video as we would feature a creature no one talks about. Subscribe so you do not miss it, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up.